podcast for the week of October the 14th. Uh, I just wanted to start things off by telling you that that said Engadget podcast is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. You can get a free trial and 10% off uh, both of those things by going to squarespace.com and entering the offer code squarespace.com slash Engadget. My name is Brian Heater. I'm the guy in the spinny chair. It's uh, what, what, uh, Joseph Volpe, what would you call this color of green? Turf. Well, that's the. It's peridot. What? What? Peridot. Peri- Dana, Dana you, Woolman with the a obscure the company store catalog. Do you, do you look at do you do you have a lot of swatches at home? I feel like we. This is uh, hello guys. This is the episode where we enact and play out gender stereotypes. I'm <laughs> I'm Dana Woolman. I'm the one who on. knows the names of um, different colors. Can tell the difference between. Subtly different a, a colors. If I was inside. going to guess that one person in this room would be able to tell me what shade this was, it would be Joseph. I would have guessed that too. <laughs> but apparently Dana knows more than me. Pa- what is it? Paradox? Paradox. It's it's the <laughs> Paradox I think is the um it's the birth gemstone for August. And I was not born in August, but I know huh? that anyway. Oh, wow, do you know it's, about astrology too? Um I it's know that my sign, sign changed recently and, and I'm not technically Capricorn anymore. Uh-oh. What is that? How does that happen? Yeah, I didn't there was know that a, there happen. was a, a, an extra now. sign added that threw everybody off. They added a new sign. When did this yeah. happen? Oh, a couple years ago. They can do that. Yeah. I don't. Know. I want to add a new sign. I don't believe in the new sign. <laughs> That's a, so Pluto got downgraded to a planetoid, and they added a new sign. Did yeah. that all happen in the same week? Yeah. Now your love life is all screwed up. What's well, a consequence? I mean, I blame Pluto. Do you? Yeah. I blame Pluto. Yeah, he's he's always stealing my woman. <laughs> Uh, let's, uh, oh, I wanted to, to kick things off, uh, by, by talking about a few, uh, taking care of business, yes. TCB, some, some housekeeping, yeah. I guess, as they say, yeah. in the industry. Uh, first of all, uh, there's a farewell note from Mr. Darren Brooklyn, right now, yes. check it out, uh, after seven years? Over seven years. Over seven years. Been here forever. Yeah. Which is, let's put it that way. Which is pretty close to as long as Engadget has yeah. existed. I think the E in Engadget stands for Darren. I don't a lot of bees. They, 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 neither of <laughs> us, but, but I, You're my thinking logic too much, follows. Brian. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, there's an E in there somewhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there's an E in there somewhere. See? In our hearts. I might stop that too. You ate some, you ate some meat. That's why I'm running. This is going to be a weird This couch is very comfortable. Episode. Is it Peridot? Uh, so, so, sadly, Darren, um, I keep, I keep saying he's no longer with us. But Don't, yeah, he didn't pass but on. But he's no he's longer with us. It's Darren true. died. He's dead to me. And I'm now married to Dana Murph. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, she takes really good photos of me. Of your wedding. Yeah. <laughs> Did she take photos? So, so, so Darren's wife, Dana, is a, uh, a wedding photographer. She is, yeah. Did she take photos at their wedding? Is there a lot of selfies of her just holding? Like, there are really many amazing selfies ones. of them, and I hope that they, they are still taking selfies in gorgeous locations when they're 80. Oh, I don't think that'll ever stop. Even though he's dead now, do you think that she's going to end with the... There have been advances in, in, in technology. There are sure. those Japanese firms that you can just strap like a sort of suit onto. Okay. Those exoskeletons and just keep the body going. <laughs> I'm all in favor of that. Give me a little joystick. We'll give it to Dana Murph. Yep. She just reanimate him. He would be. I mean, he's the world record holder for for blogging. I can't. I can't imagine if Dan, Darren was half machine. I mean, Darren kind of is. I feel spiritually half. Well, machine. wouldn't it be like Elysium? I haven't seen either. I saw trailers. Yeah, you know, Matt Damon. He puts on an exoskeleton, is that with the exosuit, and then he like you're basing this on the trailer. Yeah. Just, okay. And then he goes and he's like, Jodie Foster, you were in Contact, and she's like, I was. So she plays herself <laughs> in this yeah, movie. This is plays. some sort of dystopian future yeah. where Jodie Foster plays Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster in Contact. Jodie Foster plays Nell in <laughs> Contact. Jodie Foster in Contact. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For the folks playing at home, we were told to stay on topic for at least the first twenty minutes. I'd say we've succeeded. I, I don't know. It's I don't know who. Happen. I don't know who. Okay. Uh, so so uh, we we sadly lost three uh, three members of the team. Yeah. Zachary Lutz from the from the mobile team. And Joe Palacino. Joe Palacino. So who's producing this show? I don't even. Who knows? If this gets out into the world, I think we'll uh, we'll it'll be a, a, an amazing stroke of luck. I think yes. the birdies are taking care of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, also, more housekeeping. I wanted to mention the fact that we have announced. Uh, ten, all ten of our uh, our semifinalists for insert coin. So as everybody in this room knows, probably except for you, everybody on this side <laughs> of 
the Mixing Board Knows uh, Expand is happening on the 9th and 10th of November here in New York at the Javits Center. Um, Insert Coin was easily one of the... Uh, one of the highlights of uh, of March's edition of Expand, so we're really looking forward to this. There's a lot of cool stuff on here. Um, Any of these jump out at you in particular? I wrote a couple of these today, um, so you can check out some longer write-ups of them on this site right now. Uh, Blink Scan is really cool. I'm just gonna play favorites right now. And talk yeah, about you the may ones as well. Excited about. Yeah, for it. Uh, Blink Scan is really neat. So like you. you there, there's a demo video that you can check out on the site right now, and somebody dropped. 47 coins onto the scanner. It's okay. able to scan all of them and create separate images of each of them so it crops them and centers them very That's quickly. Yeah. It's kind of a cool scanner. This wire bender, this DI wire bender thing is really neat. This is kind of, I don't know, I see this as potentially the next in line after uh, the desktop 3D printers and, and CNC millers. This is kind of, it just, it, it literally bends wires into cool works of art. Hmm. Worth checking out, uh, Grow Cubes. I was told by Grow Cubes I'm that I'm very excited think, about that. I think this is really cool. Yeah, I was told uh, that I'm on their beta testing list, which I'm pretty excited. What do you about. think you would grow if you had one? Things you can talk about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm babies. Baby, baby. I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm legitimately excited because I live in an apartment in New York City. There are there's a good three months out of the year where you can grow things here anyway. Yeah. So this is a it's a big square hunk of plastic with a little rotating wheel in the middle. Um, it makes sure that all the plants on there get light. You can do... Uh, and it's purple. And it's purple. My dad and, would really like this. Yeah. He's into gardening. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do, do, they, do, do, they have a, do they have a garden? or? Well, they, they have a okay. backyard. Yeah. So, so they exist in Brooklyn, you know. Just but you know, I'm aware. That's in the wintertime, this would keep Larry Wolman really sure. amused and happy. Uh, I'm sure it, of it. it. It uses aeroponics, which is a, uh, something I, I wasn't familiar with yeah. before, but it's pretty clear from the name. So it's like hydroponics, except it uses a nutrient-rich mist. Yeah. So it uses that to feed them. Um, you don't need any soil at all, like in hydroponics, and it uses 90% less water um, than, than, than standard growing. And then, and then it's networked, so you, you crowdsource. No you, no, you can actually cr sort of crowdsource what all these plants need. That's so neat. I see where this is definitely tech um, tech focused. Would you say this is one of the more sciency, um, sort of natural sciency? Yeah, I mean it's the have? only thing that technically qualifies, I think, as natural science. <laughs> on this list of yeah, because yeah, you're actually yeah, it 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 is the most nature centric thing. You know who could have used this? Me, because mm. three of my my beloved family of plants, my children, were killed. Over the past couple of months, because by, Bobo, by you. Well, we don't say that, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, yeah. It, 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 you know, I know you're probably not going to want to grow fern in here. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but you know, if you're if you're I don't know produce, it would look like a really good art installation to have this sort of giant purple yeah. cube with your plants inside of it. I'm thinking from a design perspective, people. I don't really care about the health of the plants. Apartment. Go for it. Yeah, I'll eat them. Okay, organic. Yeah, locally sourced. Yeah. Uh, heads up is cool. Um, like I'm kind of waiting to see like a final demo of this thing, but it's 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 a heads up display for your for your car. I'm not so sold on this bell. Yeah, uh, mm. the, yeah. The, well, I, I mean, it, you know, it's it, 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 we kind of have yet to see what they they do with that, but it's a sort of an electronic bike bell. Yeah. Um, different. You can you basically have ringtones on your bike. I think it'd be better if you could zap people in front of you out of the way. Electronic flashing lights. It's like I said, early a little days. shock. Yeah, early yeah, days. We can add things. This is yeah. <laughs> I think I think they they will be there at expand. You will be there at expand. You favor the more violent solution for dealing with bicyclists. Well, you know, I was thinking about Galaxy or Gear today, and I was pedestrians like, depends what side. You just need a right. lance. You just need a lance well, for bike jousting. I just want a laser yeah. to shoot out of my watch. You and Doctor Evil. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Uh, what else? What else is uh, smart yeah, power Bible. strip? Oh, smart! Yeah, I like the smart power strip a lot. I think this is a really clever idea. So uh, you know, everybody is kind of trying to get into the home automation game, and Microsoft and Google have attempted with not a ton of luck in the past. Obviously, they're still making a push there. But this, this is, is a really, very Nest sort of. Yeah, I mean, it's a very it's a very a very simple intuitive solution to it, which is you get a power strip. Yeah. You plug a bunch of stuff into it. And then you can use your smartphone to turn everything on and off separately. You can monitor your power usage. And it's on your smartphone, so you can do it remotely. Right. Or you can do what I do, which is unplug everything in your apartment when you're not using it. 
Sure. Or you can do what I do, which is you know check check the stove fifty times before you leave the apartment. <laughs> I this do is the great. Same. This is great for obsessive compulsive people like us, Joseph. Are you secretly a little OCD? Oh man, majorly so. But I'm you know if I could have a smart smart phone app to monitor it, I think uh, I would probably leave the house a little quicker. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I would probably leave the phone home. <laughs> You'd probably keep that. checking your app over. Yeah, yeah, you would. But at least I'm out of the house. I think right. that's the important thing. Yeah, you're out of the house and you're monitoring your house. Yep. There you go. Uh, let's actually let's start off by talking about the uh, uh, the Windows 8.1 update, which is rolling out now. Uh, Dana, you had a chance to get a hands-on with it back in August, July. Well, I, I wrote a really. Uh, you're not going to see a review on the site, but mm -hmm. that's because I wrote a review-length preview back when consumer the consumer preview first dropped, and that was in late June. Yeah. Since then, very little has changed. Maybe a little. A little in the way of fit and finish stuff, maybe some small UI changes, but nothing in the way of new features or anything like that. It's, it's more or less the same as what we broke down for you in late June. But anyway, so what are the, so what are the big sort of additions? This is blue, right? You're not going to get the code name blue. This, this is the one that used to be called blue. UI yeah. Refresh. Um, so they brought back the start button, but not in, in the way you'd expect. When you click it, you don't get the same flyout menus that you used to get. It just the start button is always on top. It's always fixed in the lower left hand corner where you're used to seeing it. And but you hit it and that brings you back to the, the new Windows 8 start screen. Yeah. Hit it again, it brings you back to, to desktop. Okay. What's nice though is that there's a new setting where you can have the same desktop background or the same wallpaper slash desktop background for both the start screen and the um, and the desktop. So when you switch from one to the other, it's not as jarring because there's sort of this constant visual in the background. Mm -hmm. and, and then it just kind of looks like the start tiles are floating or appearing on screen. It's hard to explain, but it's um, a less jarring experience. Yeah, and that's okay. maybe my single favorite thing that Microsoft improved with 8.1. So let, let's, uh, let's turn it into a review right now. You have to go back, you have to score it. Let, let's, let, let's assume we're on a 10 point. Uh, <laughs> Scoring uh, scoring meter here. What do you what, what are you giving this upgrade? I think Windows 8.1 is great. I mean, first of all, it's free for people who already have Windows 8 devices. So if that's you, you should have already Why hit not? download. I don't know what What's whatever it was you? eight hours ago yeah. or something like that. And um, refresh a lot of times because it. I think. It yeah, has it, some it, issues it became it available going. at 7 a.m. Eastern this morning. So if you haven't downloaded it, get on that. Um, or maybe wait until later. Yeah, the question is, sure, they're also selling sure. it as um, upgrades for people using Windows 7. If you're using Windows 7, it costs upwards of $120 Oof, aye, aye, aye. to upgrade. In which case, it, it, it still kind of returns to the same question. Are you generally comfortable with the idea of Windows 8? The truth is, you're going to have to eventually get comfortable. You're going to have to upgrade. If, you, if you're sticking with yeah. PC, sure. Yeah, yeah, or switch to Mac. But, you're going to have to upgrade to a Mac. Um, I, I do like to think that 8.1 <laughs> addresses some of the complaints people had about Windows 8 being yeah. so jarring. I think it it doesn't totally correct those complaints or address those complaints, but I think it mostly does. Um, and I'll give it to Microsoft. Whenever they put out new software, it's generally very stable, um, very usable. Even the consumer preview is very usable. So I think, you know, the water should be fine if you want to test out this final build that came out today. Yeah, I think th I think they they're they're um, they've moved into a nice cycle with this, right? Let's let, let's put let, you know, let's put a new uh, kind of a brand new OS out every couple of years and then let's use the next couple of iterations to sort of tweak that to right. to people's desires, including adding a start button. Yeah, yeah, Microsoft's well aware of that. Yeah. 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 Um, and free and and it's and it's hard to argue with free. I'm right. I'm wondering, I mean, the one thing I would say about setting it at free Obviously, I think free is a good thing, but the one thing I would say is setting it free, that means that they're going to have a lot of trouble charging in the future if they want to do, if they want to charge a little bit for, for iterations. Like, once you set that standard. Oh, yeah, well, it's a precedent. And yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, but this isn't, again, this isn't a brand new operating system. It, it's basically a nicer name for Service Pack 1. Right. No, no, you it's know? not, you know, it's, it, 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 it's, it's not, but, you know, obviously the, the direct comparison is the Apple model, which is, don't make it free, but charge, like, $30 right. every which year. which is a so. reasonable thing for consumers to love. Yeah. Sure. yeah, I'm just saying they could have gotten away with it. Yeah. They didn't. It's probably best for consumers. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and in some sense it feels like, yeah, it feels like a fix. It's less, it's less a, like a major feature pack, and it's more just kind of tweaking the last version of it. So, yeah, download that, dummy, Yeah. <laughs> right now. Well, you know, it's funny that you were mentioning it before, and I'll just say this before we move on, but 
Yeah. I won't. I won't say names. I won't name names. Oh, do it. There was a Microsoft. Exec Nobody's watching. Who, who once told me? Mm -hmm. You know, we know, we know how we we. Is it Julie Larson Green? I can't say, but I was told. Does it rhyme with <laughs> Bully Larson Green? <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting anything out of me. <laughs> All I'm going to tell you is Microsoft is well aware that they don't get it right the first time. Yeah. And that it's probably the third time around the corral that they're going to address all the issues that they needed to. I mean that. So, uh, and they know they have the money to do it that yeah. way, so that's what they're going to do. Uh, well, it's that's it's not a great way to approach things. It's, no, it's not. But, <laughs> but they're aware of it, I which think, I think is I think only some of this sort of stuff was in response to user complaints. I think definitely the return to the start button wasn't part of the very original plan. I think they said, okay, this is bothering people. We'll bring it back. Yeah. I think there were certain other things that were on their wish list the whole time and that they just didn't get done in time to ship Windows 8 last fall. Yeah. Which I mean, makes sense. Well, I mean, it feel you know if 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 a if they're pushing out kind of a half baked product and b there are just things, features that didn't get pushed out. What was what was the rush? What was the you know what was the purpose in, in putting kind of a, a semi only semi baked product out? There? It wasn't Didn't semi. It came right before holiday. It came right before That's holiday. Why. I wouldn't call the original semi baked. I mean, if you um, there are some other important changes. They you know search is better in this version also. The way you can snap windows into place, you have mm -hmm. a little more flexibility with how many windows you put on the screen and how much of the screen each window takes up. But if you look at the preview that I wrote back in June, a whole bunch of it are That new novel that you wrote? Yeah, it's a, novel. a lot of it are new native apps, um, which weren't necessary for the first run of Windows 8, but are nice to have in yeah. this one, like um, a, a feature that's sort of similar to Read It Later, where you can bookmark websites and then have a repository for them where you can come back and, you know, so what's the Read status? Later. What's the status on RT? It, it's still going. You know, the Surface Two is running it, and you know we should have a review soon. But, but no, uh, but no, uh, no major, no major upgrades on that end. RT has has benefited from the same upgrades here for the most part mm -hmm. as um, Windows, Windows 8.1. I mean, obviously, the same limitations apply. Um, you know, you still can't run desktop apps, x86 apps on an RT device, but all the UI changes that we have here on Windows 8.1, we have on the RT version. That includes the start button, it includes um, the ability to take photos from the lock screen, um, all that jazz. So what's your take on, I don't know if you guys saw the rumor from Mary Jo Foley, it was like from yesterday, I believe, mm. where she was saying, um, going forward in the, the, the roadmap, Microsoft is going to be favoring Windows Phone 8 as the sort of tablet OS and then segmenting it and anything larger than maybe 8 or 10 inches and going to straight up Windows 8 since they share the kernel and they can have the unified app store in the future and whatnot. I mean, do you think that's, that's something that, that um, holds, holds weight or? The Windows Phone bit, um, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, uh, I guess that, that that wouldn't surprise me, but I, I do know this, that I've been saying this for a long time, that I think RT is being made obsolete by really great Intel Atom-powered tablets. Yeah. Um, these low power chips that allow you to run desktop apps that still provide great battery life. And if you look at Microsoft today, this week, Microsoft is putting a lot of its own marketing weight behind these new eight inch tablets, all of which are running um, Intel's new Baytrail tra trips. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it just sounds like they're not talking about RT at this point. You know, it's. I mean, they're still putting products out there, but they, they've they've barely um, mentioned it. Sort of backs away from you. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, you, you'll see surface in commercials. But what I've noticed, and this this frustrates me a bit. Those terrible commercials. No. Well, the ones <laughs> I'm thinking of. Um, Microsoft has these new commercials for Surface, which I think do a better job than any other previous Surface ads of showing why you might want one. It's not just a bunch of colorful. No, they, they get rid of the dancing rotating. people. They or show the ones somebody. Where they attack Apple. I mean. They show someone using a pen, which is the Surface Pro, not the RT. Mm -hmm. They show someone typing with it on a dark airplane, okay. um, which is great because the new Surface cover, the keyboard covers, are backlit. Ooh, back, right. um, so th those ads are great. What frustrates me about them is that I think. Microsoft doesn't make clear which is the Pro and which is the RT. Yeah. Because if you show someone using a pen, you're like, that's great. Wait until the consumer walks into the store and finds it's not the RT version. Right. Or, or wait until the consumer buys a lower price version not knowing it's a different operating system. Yeah. I think that's the problem, right? <laughs> right. So, I mean, no, they are, you know, there are advertisements for the Surface, but I find that even the ads that have the Surface RT in it, use the Surface Pro, which in my opinion is the better product, as sort of a crutch. 
I don't think there's any question about yeah. that. I think, and also a larger issue with Microsoft in general, and I was talking to somebody on staff about this today, is their naming scheme in, uh, scheme in general. Like Somebody needs to sit their marketing head down and just sort of smack them gently for a few hours and say, like, Windows Phone, it sounds antiquated. Like, I wouldn't want that. Windows RT, retweet. All the other, I mean, it sounds inferior. It sounds like something complicated and stodgy. I mean, it should, from, it is inferior. That's right. <laughs> right I mean, technically you, you should, sure, you should go out of your way to point that out. What, what would you call it? Just window, like Windows 8 Lite? I don't know. You, I mean, I, first of all, I'm in favor of, I know there's a lot of brand equity in Windows, but I would chuck Windows altogether. I mean, to me, that sounds like an 80-year-old man, like the equivalent of an 80-year-old man in terms of like <laughs> PC. Terms. I mean, you are Congrats, like a, you are you're not like being hired at Microsoft in anytime ways. soon. That's actually they should hire me because I will give you great names. We'll base what it would off you of call birds. Windows? Go. I don't know. This I would is have your, to think this, of, is your uh, this is your rehearsal. I would have to. I would Bully have to Barson look. Green is watching. <laughs> I would have to think about it honestly. Yeah. To unify it and make it more consumer friendly because it, it sounds like something from an older era. Do you think? I mean, I, you, I I'm I don't know if. There's that. Is there that much of a stigma with Windows with most consumers? At Not this on point? the PC side. I, I know so many people who, where their default is to, to buy a Windows computer when they need a new computer. Um, I think Windows might be more of a liability on the phone side, where they do not have as big of an ecosystem and not as much that is, market yeah. share. And, and anyone who thinks I'm trolling, look at Steve Bomber's recent remarks, Jeez, basically admitting trolling. that. You know they have next to no mobile well, share. Well, you know maybe now maybe now is the time for a rebrand. Mean? They have ten percent in Europe. It's huge. WP eight. Yes, it's so that, it's right? catchy. It's yeah. Super catchy. And that's what we end up calling it. Whip eight. Whip eight. Whip eight. Whip eight. They could have gotten Devo to do that. Actually, campaign. I think what they should do is they should go with royal family in law names like Pippa, Fergie. So you think <laughs> that they're they're not they're 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 not making an aggressive enough push at the UK? No, definitely not. Yeah. No. For the Queen, in particular. Sure. Elizabeth. They could name them Lizzie. Popes. I call her Lizzie. You know, maybe you're tailoring it to different, <laughs> to different right. parts Right, depending of the world. on your region, you can like, go very you could, like It could be characters in Duck Dynasty for the U.S. Right. I, you know, I don't they're, know what they're Duck like Dynasty our, is. But they're like our royal family. I, I thought it was like Count Duckula, and it's not. It's a reality show, isn't it? Yeah, it's about vampire ducks, so, no, so oh. you're pretty right. Well, then I'm, I'm Okay, probably. so uh, <laughs> let's, move, uh, let, let's move on to... Um, the part of the show where we stare at an invite and try to guess what it means. Joseph is really excited about this one. Uh, <laughs> Apple, as suspected, has confirmed that October 22nd is going to be the date of their uh, of their next event. Here's what I'll tell you what we know from this invite is um, there's a big Apple on it, so Apple's probably going to be involved. It's so awful, this pun. It's very colorful. We still have a lot to cover. Well, I'm getting to that, dummy. Oh, I wanted to say it though. Okay. With my appropriate amount of time. Uh, it's it's got a lot of colors on it, which you know, I mean, the last the last invite had a lot of colors, and that proved to be a clue. Yeah. The five uh, C, and as Joseph noticed, the tagline is uh, "We still have a lot to cover on this one," which you know, on one level is um, a reference to the fact that they literally just had an event about a month ago. Right. But also didn't get everything away, and then also. Covers. Yeah. What? What? Uh, you know what I think is coming? Key, backlit keyboard cover. No, you know what I think it is. Stylus. Nope. I think you're going to see eight-inch polycarbonate, multi-colorful iPad Tamagotchi. Mm-hmm. Like That's a it. like a pet. Yeah. Like a, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. If you neglect your iPad, it'll die. Right. Well, no. If you put the cover on it, it suffocates. Oh yeah, well it's that's a cruel sort of product, but I mean, that's it's a bad... innovative and it's disruptive. So why would you get a cover and then when you use the cover? It's a game. You're gamifying it. To murder. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Your pet. Right. That's a terrible game. Well, we'll oh. add that to our, our <laughs> what to expect post. That's the most when that goes live. Game, Joseph. Uh, no, this is yeah. I is mean, that it, a cardigan? You just made a cardigans reference. No. Isn't that, dangerous game one of the songs in the cardigans? The most album? dangerous game is, is man. That, Hunting man. We come from different pop culture. Um, th yeah, this obviously implies. I mean, you know, has Apple done everything it can do with the tablet itself, and now they're moving on to the cover? I guess, or maybe there'll be colorful iPads. No, that would never happen. Well, I was, I, I, it's, you know, it's, it's possible. I could see a colorful iPad Mini. I don't think that that's out of the realm of possibilities. Um, I, I was, I was actually saying this when, when uh, I was at the. Um, the Kindle Fire event, um, God, what was that, about a month ago now? Yeah. Um, I noticed that if you look at the sort of cover that, uh, a, a, the proprietary cover that a company makes for its devices, 
that's pretty indicative of what they think that device is ultimately going to do. So you've got sure. the Surface Pro, it's got a keyboard <clears> cover, and that means they think it's going to be a productivity device. Yeah. Uh, the, the Fire has this stand, right? So, Media consumption. Exactly, yeah. so you, you can watch a movie on they it. They call that origami? The origami right? cover. It's funny, because the one Acer just came out with um, this morning, they call it their crunch cover. Oof. And it looks like the origami <laughs> yeah. cover, but it's called the crunch cover. What are you supposed to do, break up nuts with it? Either way, it is what it sounds like. So you have to give it to both companies. Yeah. And make I, something in a way that, that makes instant sense. And I really like the origami cover. I mean, in a way... In, in it's the, beautiful. In the same way it's that if you're going to buy a Surface, you kind of need to get the cover. Yeah. If you're going to buy the Fire, you should get the origami cover. Um, Apple t uh, or iPad covers traditionally have just been like just to protect the beautiful screen, right? And, and the covers have been pretty themselves. Yeah, magnetic thing, and... I would be shocked if Apple came out with um, something kind of bulky but really utilitarian, like a power cover that had some sort of built-in spare battery or something. I can't see them so then doing it. I can't see them doing it. Especially but when they're moving into the air territory where it's like as thin as you can yeah. get. Yeah. But it's like what you just said where it indicates the way the company thinks it should be used. Yeah. Microsoft took a chance on a power, on a... Uh, touch cover that, that has, um, uh, not a touch cover, a keyboard cover that has a battery built in this time. I, yeah. I've actually got hands on with it and when it was connected to the Surface Pro, which is already the heavier of the two tablets, together it is a lean, mean, heavy machine, but I would want that on a long distance flight to, you know, stay awake. That's going to go in the box, you know, that quote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lean, mean, heavy machine? Lean, uh, mean, heavy machine. It, the what, difference, what the really difference <laughs> is, is Microsoft has never shied away from making things a little bit bulky. It, no. it, function right. over form, right? Right, right, right. Apple right. very much believes in function. Right. And that's, I also sort in of... In form, you mean. Form. I'm sorry, in form. I apologies. find it a little weird. <laughs> I mean, I can't really believe that, they, that this hint we still have lots to cover with all the colors would just be, hey, look, we're going to have like some sort of innovative um, covers for the iPad. And that's just silly to me. That's like a really silly, silly angle to, to come. I mean, if that's the if that's the crux of this event, I don't know if put it's, me to sleep. I don't you know, know if like, it's the, I don't, I don't know if it's a, the 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 the. I mean, my, my suspicion here is that this is going to be a really packed event. Um, we're probably you know we're we're probably going to see new iPads. There's pretty good chance we'll see a mini, assuming that the rumors of it being delayed aren't true. Even right. so, we might see it. It might be. Um, in limited supply, or it might take a while for it to actually start shipping. Um, you that's know, super neat. Mac Pro. There's, we're probably gonna find out more about that. Because they already um, teased that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we saw that at the uh, at the uh, uh, iOS event. Um, the Mavericks Gold Master just came out. We're probably gonna get more information yeah. on that end. Maybe some hardware to go along with it. What about an iWatch? I think that's possible. I'm not counting on a, a redesigned MacBook Pro series. Yeah. I'm not. Um, it, it, you know, iterative updates, though, are certainly a possibility for I this. Th yeah, I mean, they may issue a press release later saying, hey, our MacBook Pros have has well, but I'm not yeah. expecting them to un unveil brand new laptop designs An in addition air, to everything uh, else. Uh, well, the Air right just, air. Yeah. they just um, mm -hmm. refresh the Air, so. Okay. Well. Yeah. Maybe just in time for the holidays. There's always time to take more money from people. Though. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're probably going to see a lot of stuff. I. I'm not betting on the iWatch happening before the holidays. Yeah, you don't think so? I, 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 I think probably not. There's, just, there's some small possibility. Um, everybody else is doing it. Right. Apple's got to get in it sooner or later. Um, but they traditionally hold back until yeah. they can figure out a way to make yeah, it sort of I, foolproof. I, I don't, I don't suspect it's coming. If, if the, um, you know what? Actually, this is something nobody's talked about. But um, if the new uh, Apple TV set doesn't come out, the, the Gene Munster right. owes... <laughs> <laughs> it was Tim $100. Oh, did they make a bet? They made a bet on stage at Expand. Tim can get a new axe. He can like an actual axe. Oh, he said X. No. <laughs> I don't know. X. So he's leave his wife and <laughs> marry a new lady and spend $100 on the wedding. I guess. Well, he did. He did. I took a flight. He's no longer with there. us either, so I'm, you know. That's <laughs> true. They're Therefore, all, he doesn't get his money. They're all dead. Uh, so okay, so that that is happening on the uh, on the on the twenty uh, second. I just lost my thing. And it's Here very I am. exciting. It's very exciting. Very uh, BlackBerry. I just like to point out with this photo from BlackBerry. This is from the Z10 launch. Yep. I took this photo. I was doing live blog photos. I remember <laughs> when Torsten outstretched his arms like this under yeah. the new logo when they renamed the company BlackBerry. And I got that shot. It's like the cool hand Luke crucifix shot. I, yes, I, knew, I yeah. was like, this is going to bite them in the ass so hard at some point later in the year. And it this is going like... one of two ways, right? Either, <laughs> either, it's, either, it's, either he's being crucified. Or resurrected? No, or uh, uh, Titanic. 
King of right. the, the King of the World. You know, I've person. never seen that movie. I haven't either. But Good. Like, wow, you're the person you, I know. You're you. You're a fraud. What do you mean? <laughs> You've never heard. I have never seen Titanic. No, I know you that scene. You don't know scene. what colors are and you haven't seen Titanic. You are a fraudulent person. No, I know that scene with Kate Winslet. Let me Winslet. ask you, why did you not see it? I just had no desire to because see it. Because I don't, I don't, I, I never, I'm just, I know this is completely off topic. I have never had a desire to, I don't care about that sort of a love story. Mm -hmm. I don't, why would you put a love story on a sinking ship? Like, I, that's You're like whole, me, that's I'm the English thing. major who has never read um, it's poetic. Catcher in the Rye. Oh, you were terrible. you were the pop culture person who no. has not seen Catch on the Rise, Titanic. Titanic. Yeah, no, Catch I, on the Rise, and I never intend to see it either. Right. However, right. you probably have to be a thirteen-year-old boy to really appreciate it. Well, I wasn't when I read it. Yeah, yeah. I was eight. Probably helps. Oh. Was a little bit more advanced. It's a little weird. Yeah. You probably got excited about the F word, though, right? <laughs> well, I was using it way before. Speaking of the F word, uh, Blackbird <laughs> sent a uh, sent a note out to users, uh, an open letter. Yeah. Which is kind of the thing to do now. Right. Open letters. Right. Oh, your Sinead O'Connor. Sinead, your, Miley, Amanda your, Palmer. That your chain is amazing. Torsten. Yeah, there was no Amanda Palmer. She didn't try to get in on the Blackberry train. I kind of wish she did. I'd be interested in her perspective. Mm -hmm. I wonder what phone she uses, is what I'm asking. Uh, I saw somebody I saw somebody um, just yesterday with the Q10. Did you really? They're out in the world. Were they looking at porn on their phone like Matt B saw? On the tube in London? No, just a normal person doing oh. normal phone things okay. with it. Like looking at porn. Yeah. Such as looking for You know, example. you know. Why would you use a Q10, though? That I was mean, the joke. I okay. mean, he posted it. He, as soon as it happened on the yeah. tube, he posted it on Twitter. And uh, I think myself, Richard Lai, Dan Seifert from The Verge, we all at the same time were like, it's Q10. <laughs> Not mind the fact that he was actually looking at yeah. porno. Yeah. Um, but I'm saying you want the larger screen if you're going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. But here's the deal. I just was uh, reading about this yesterday, which was, you know, the whole uh, Madonna and Slaver thing. I don't know if you're aware. She got banned from movie chain for that. Oh film. yeah, yeah. She was she was texting. She was the whole seriously time, right? texting yeah. on her BlackBerry. Oh. What an endorsement. But it was probably like a bold, right? She probably just. I'm sure. I'm sure it was like she, OS seven. Yeah, I don't think she it's probably BlackBerry. Madonna <laughs> Madonna probably doesn't have the latest greatest BlackBerry. I. I'm sure I unless she was texting Alicia Keys to tell her about her great new BlackBerry. <laughs> uh, open. This is an open letter to uh, to, to BlackBerry users, saying in so many words that they can quote continue to count on BlackBerry. Don't leave us is what they're saying. Um, they're, they're saying that they've you know they've they've still got some money in the bank. They're not in right. debt. Um, so I guess if you look at the books, they're probably in okay shape. But if you look at the fact that they've Keep laying at their off trajectory, yeah. half of right. their staff, and and you can't. I mean, you can't stem consumer uh, perception at this point, or the fact that BYOD, which stands for Bring Your Own Device, is entrenched now, and there are all these systems in place where you can bring yeah. your Android device or, or your iOS device. There's not a lot. Samsung of... has not. And if you're not bringing your own device, you're probably still opting for a corporate iPhone, right? Instead of a black. Or or yeah, or Samsung has Knox. So right. they, they've gone another way to create a you know really really secure platform too, so they're covering that as well. I'm wondering though, ultimately, if if sending this letter, if there's any positive in actually sending out a letter like this, this just seems like a big mistake. This just seems like an acknowledgement that that the ship is sinking. Right? Yeah, to me, it's, it comes across as a gaffe, right? It's yeah. just more fodder for their humiliation. Right? Them, 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 like them, <clears throat> them, basically publicly. Admitting that they need to send this letter in and of itself is a very. Hey, at least they haven't released any music videos lately. <laughs> those are. I'm sorry. I enjoyed those. Those enlivened all of those live events I had what to go think, to. What do you think, Brian? The music videos. Yeah. Um, I think they probably could have spent the resources a little bit better than making music videos. I mean, I don't think they spent that much money to make those. What if they found, what if they found out that they hired like Spike Jones directed <laughs> or something? Like, what if that was where all? Well, all then that? they're genius. In that I case. think it's you know here's what I, here's what I think about the videos. If they were making those internally and they were having fun doing them, fine. Right. No reason to release that at a press conference. Well, I. It does not look good. I don't remember the one from BlackBerry World, but I remember being at BlackBerry Jam it was and the they rock showed band, it. band, right? They were like they've, they they've done a couple of yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I it 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 doesn't it doesn't strike me as a company that knows what it's doing. <laughs> Clearly not. No, right? I would say I would say history is proven. I think there. I think I think that those those were a bad idea. I think that this open letter was a really bad idea because th they have to know that all it's going to do is cause people like us to once again bring up the fact that it looks like they're kind it's, of doing right. It's not a platform to invest in. Yeah, and I just saw as we were coming down on the, the many many screens in the newsroom, Lenovo is apparently. Uh, 
going after or considering a bid? That's been a rumor for a while, I yeah. think. Um, you know, Lenovo is obviously making their own push in the smartphone space, but it certainly makes sense for them to get involved in the, the enterprise space yeah. because they're, they're the ThinkPad company. Right. Um, they're the Terrence company. They're the Terrence company. Yeah, I, you know, if you can get them for if you, you can get them for a good price, I guess. As you said, there's not a ton of reason to create a devoted enterprise device at this point. No. I really think BlackBerry is going to be gutted and sold for patents. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the value of the company yeah. right now is they've got a lot of very very valuable patents. It's a shame. I know. Yeah. Well, hopefully most of those people that get laid off wind up at Motorola's new Canadian. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure that. I'm sure that. They'll be okay, and I'm sure that Torsten Heinz is going to be okay. He's I'm, he's, I'm sure he's more than right okay. Now. Yeah, he'll probably be, be in this position as he's falling from it. As he's being driven in his QNX luxury car. I don't even know what that. It's been at every BlackBerry event, and I don't know what it is because I don't know cars. It's black. Yeah, is it like a, a Maybach or something? Probably. It yeah. has four wheels and a steering wheel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I've seen. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 Oh, a car. Yeah. That's what you're referring to. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to remind everybody that this episode of the Engadget Podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free trial and 10% off, you can go to squarespace.com and use the offer code squarespace.com slash Engadget. That'll help us. That'll help you. It's a win-win. Yay. Uh, they've got a couple of new products they wanted to tell us about. They've got uh, brand new tools for uh, for musicians. You can check that out by going to their blog. And you can also check out a, a new uh, 3D visualizer for shipping. So Man, you say square, and all I can think of is the uh, New Yorker profile of Jack Dorsey. Nope, this is squarespace.com. Yeah, very different. Sponsors of the Engadget podcast. Very different. Uh, Dana, Sorry. can you tell us a little bit about the, uh, the GoPro Hero 3 Plus? Yeah, I mean, this was sort of, I know it was a fun review for James, too, right? Because, you know, <laughs> testing an action cam is probably really fun. It's a great shot also, of him James. on the lawnmower, <laughs> yeah. like, rounding a corner. Yeah. Fun to edit, though, because, I mean, GoPro is already sort of one of the biggest names in this space. It's and, the biggest name. Yeah, and one of our, basically our go-to for um, when recommending action cams. So we already recommended GoPro's latest, and this one makes... It's, it's an incremental update, but it makes it even better. The, the, yeah. You know, it's a slimmer, more compact um, casing. Yeah. Better battery the, the life. The device itself looks exactly the same. Yeah, it's, it's a bit more compact. The video quality is better. What's not to like? Right, <laughs> it's, right. Uh, yeah, bat the battery is better. The Wi-Fi is better. It's faster. Yeah. I think Go even on. James sort of made a, a dig at the way we talk about iPhone reviews, saying this is Apple's best iPhone yet. Well, it's yeah. GoPro's best Hero Cam yet, and therefore it's the one you should get. This if is the GoPro you want Hero a, an action, yeah. <laughs> if it's the one you want an action yeah. cam, this is the one you want because um, we like GoPro best, generally speaking, in well, this space. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I haven't I haven't heard much from a, a peep out of Contour lately. I don't know if they're even still going. No, weren't, weren't they? Well, and, and I mean, what's interesting some, is collapsing. Some that, yeah. Yeah. One, of the, one of the sort of interesting paragraphs in that review to me was his competition section because he actually did thoroughly canvas the... Mm -hmm the competitors and um, he came up with a whole bunch of companies but it's amazing that for all the competition GoPro technically has most of it's insignificant. Yeah. Well GoPro I mean GoPro is one of those companies where the name of the company is essentially syn synonymous like it'll be kind of a genericized trademark in a few years. If you're talking about an action cam nobody says action cam people say GoPro. Yeah, yeah. but I mean look at this in the paragraph he mentions um, not just Contour uh, Sony's got one, right? But mm. he mentioned Sony. I bet a lot of people didn't know they had an action cam. Drift, Toshiba, Ion, Viho, Polaroid, Swan. Are these companies where you even knew that they were in I did. I've seen space? the Polaroid one, and I think it's about $20 or something. <laughs> it's not a... It's not a very high end. But that's the other thing. Many of these are not as sophisticated as the one we yeah. reviewed. So obviously, if you did have a budget, you can go cheaper, but you would not be getting the best. Yeah, I mean, GoPro. Um, GoPro did have some pretty stiff competition, I, I would say, especially with the, the Sony, and, and Contour was really making nice devices mm. there for a while. But man, uh, 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 Ben Harrison, our, uh, our uh, I show I was just producer, going to bring this up. Has a three, and I've seen him use it in person, and just just being able to, to monitor it on your smartphone is, to me, like that kills everything else. Right? And it's also, I mean, I, I've been with him on countless shoots where... He's just like, oh, I know what I could do with the GoPro right now. Yeah. And, and there's so many inventive shots you can come up it with. It makes you, yeah, exactly. It's yeah. one of those tools that just makes you rethink the way you shoot things, yeah. right? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, so if you're going to buy a GoPro, that would be the GoPro to buy. Um, if you're going to buy an HTC One phone, on the other hand... Do not buy the Max. Don't buy the Max. <laughs> Joseph, do, do, how much can you tell me about the HTC One Max and why you should not buy this product? I, I cannot tell you much because I've never held it. I've never okay. played with it. But and if I, Sharif is to be believed. Right. I will say that I think the, the most important sort of um, verdict that he issued was the fact that it's sort of fruitless to go after this fingerprint scanning you know, security authentication mm -hmm. and place it, an inferior module in the first place, and place it below... <laughs> The camera on the back, because essentially, are we about to be yeah, this guy slammed in the head by something? We're being... Because essentially, every time you have to go swipe it, first of all, it's in an awkward position, so you have to reorient your hand. But you're going to smudge the camera all the time. Wait, are you? Uh, so, so you're not saying that it's a bad idea to have a fingerprint reader in general? You're no, 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 this no, is no. Poorly placed. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So, uh, first of all, I think that's that's the major con, and then it takes away optical image stabilization. Which was a major draw, yeah. and I think with with was a major draw on the one. And I think with something like a five point nine inch phone, it's a lot more difficult to, to sort of handle. I, you know, I, I do I do like Sharif's review, and I like that Sharif went out of his way to contact HTC to ask them some questions about the device, and basically said, you know, shouldn't this new phone be the best phone that right. you've made? Like, shouldn't everything be a little bit better than yeah. last time? And I think they basically came back to him and said, hey, listen, this isn't a flagship phone. We just put out a flagship phone and we're getting in the future. And we just wanted to make a Although a you could level size. the same questions at Samsung, you know. Yeah. Um, but no, you can't because Samsung has that sort of spaghetti spray approach to everything, yeah. okay? HTC is very measured in their product cycle, right? They don't, they don't have the yeah. money, they don't really have the resources to do this. Yeah, um, yeah but I, I think the issue here more, too, too is, is more that, that they're calling it the one in the first place. Right. So they're 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 positioning it, if not a success for you know at least a, a direct relative of a really great handset. I mean, the, when when there were rumors going back, I actually had been um, the the same sort of source that had tipped me off to the One Mini, told me about the the One Max. It was codenamed T6. If you pay attention to that stuff, you're a geek like that. And the first thing that that crossed my mind was if they're iterating on the One and that sort of like all metal body and making it this large. Mm -hmm. It's going to be heavy, sure. and that's going to turn people off. Like, what is the point of that? If anything, you want to make it lighter, in, in the same way Samsung would go after the, the Note category and making it light, and, and it's heavier, and that's that's a major drawback, I think, for a lot of. I just don't know Sharif who this is for. Sharif and I had some had some arguments over the headline. We ended up, ended up going with a straight HTC One Max review headline, um, mostly because we couldn't think of anything that would come after the colon. Sharif right. only wanted to make jokes about how you could like throw it, and beat, throw the phone at they, someone or beat someone with it or how it was hard to it pick should, up. It should have been um, HTC One Max review, colon, Naomi Campbell's favorite Android. Android. Yeah. Right. You could take oh. out a couple assistants with that. Yeah, right? you could just sort of frisbee them. Yeah. And kill three assistants with one handset. This is why you need to reach out to me when you're having these. Yeah, these so you can have these arcane <laughs> supermodel references that none of our readers That's will not know. arcane. Well, come on. And gadget readers. They know. Don't generalize. Also, a big innovation on this, at least for HTC, is that the back is removable. That's good. That's Although not the battery, apparently. Right? Am I correct in that? I, I think that's true. Yeah. Which is the point. <laughs> well, I mean, that that would be the point, but in order to like... They did add removable storage, which I don't think you have on the no. HTC, the regular HTC One. So right. you can at least find that mm -hmm. underneath um, a micro SD slot for once. but. The battery is fixed in. Yeah, and that's probably because it's a molded battery too. So, what about the uh, speaking of uh, Windows Windows A? What about the Sony Vio Tap Eleven? Tap Eleven. I reviewed that um, this past week, and it is. My headline was "Meet Sony's Answer to the Surface Pro," mm -hmm. and indeed, it, it looks very inspired by Microsoft's tablet. It has a kickstand. It has also um, Intel Core processors inside. It, is meant to be used with a pen that comes in the box, and um, it, I mean, it just just generally has similar specs, except that it's um, thinner and lighter. I like the look a lot. Well, let me it's ask really you. Nice it's, yeah, but you spend a little bit of time with it, there are some build quality issues. It's, it's a bit of a tough compromise, because the Surface Pro is, is heavier and weightier, but also feels better made. Hmm. There are some issues here, and I, I don't know how much to chalk up to the fact that I tested a pre-production model, and how much of it is just that 
Sony was going after this $800 price point, all accessories included, which Microsoft doesn't do. Sure. And they clearly had to make some compromises, and I think build quality is one of the things that... But your, but your conclusion at the, at, at the end of the review is that it was still priced a little high. Well, yeah, because it starts at 800 with the keyboard and pen included, mm -hmm. which sounds nice at first when you consider that the Surface Pro starts at 900 with no keyboard yeah. included, and the, with the keyboard costing 200 or? 120 or 130, yeah. depending on which of Microsoft's keyboards you get. But the Tab 11 at 800 starts with a Pentium processor, whereas the Surface uh, Pro starts with a Core i5 processor. Mm -hmm. If you were to configure the Sony's tablet with um, a Core i5 processor, it would be within 20 bucks or so of the Surface Pro. But but at the at the config configuration that it, it comes with, you know, at the base level, are most people going to be able to do what they need to do on it? I mean, do people really need to bump it up? Depends what you want to do with it, right? Sure. Well, my question is, and I don't, why I, why this over Microsoft's own sort of reference product for Windows 8? Well, it's thinner and it's lighter. And it's I, I don't know yet the battery life on the Surface Pro, so I can't say yet whether the battery life is better or equal or what. Right. But it is thinner, thinner and lighter. The starting price is cheaper um, for what, whatever whatever that means to you with the specs, and it really comes down to that. I think those are the biggest reasons you would get it over the Surface Pro. Okay. It it, it, do, it does feel like with Microsoft making these. I mean, you called it a reference device, but with them making these devices, that there's not a ton of incentive for another company. Oh, the to manufacturers make, to jump on. Make right. a Windows yeah. 8, you know, because obviously the, the, the user base, at least from the tablet standpoint, isn't huge enough right now that you definitely need to rush into that. Yeah. And if Microsoft is already making its own devices, why would you as a manufacturer want to jump on that background? Sure. I mean, if you're Sony, it's because you make everything for every <laughs> operating system. Anything you electronic you make. Here's right. the thing with Sony though, is and it is a little weird that their design is so reminiscent of the Surface, which has kind of an iconic design already. But believe it or not, this was Sony's first Windows 8 tablet. I, I believe They it. had Windows 8 Ultrabooks and convertibles yeah. with sort of funky shape-shifting designs. They could turn into tablets. Yeah, but this is the yeah. first time they've had a proper slate, just a proper standalone tablet and it is interesting to me that for their first go they chose something that really does resemble this iconic in, in terms of it having the keyboard or what is it yeah, I was gonna say because I remember the top 10 from well FIFA it's, last it's year. a whole bunch of things because it's um, the um, it's it's the kickstand it's the thin keyboard that attaches magnet magnetically to the tablet itself okay. it's the 1080p screen with the pen input and the specs inside that match, um, you know, a proper laptop. So it, it's all those things together add up to a Surface Pro competitor. Okay. Sure, but I mean, you know, if you're making this, you're going to want to put a keyboard on because that's kind of the point of getting Windows. But have it tablet. attached magnetically, even with the little. Um, yeah, makes a, makes makes sense as a way to to attach it to a device, especially if you got a kickstand on the back, which is sort of necessary. I don't need that, to put that, Sony on the defensive. Sure. I mean, I've seen Microsoft show off this product. I think they're happy that there are. I think having of course they are. Yeah, the more Windows 8 yeah. devices there are, and the more companies are on board, the happier Microsoft right. is. So, um, how sturdy is that kickstand though? Because it looks really sort of. I like it. It's ugly. Yeah. I mean, it's um, it. Uh, th there's no way of talking about this that's not going to make you snicker. So I'm sorry. It has a rubber tip at the end. <laughs> I told you so. Um, that was Joseph. By that the record. It was definitely me. It, well, okay, so it keeps it from sliding around it's on got a the tip desk. On it. <laughs> Stop it! You can't reel knock it, it over. Reel it in. It's sturdy. You can't knock it over. And if I put it in my lap, um, it it doesn't dig into my legs. The okay. surface. When I use the new surface, it's gonna. And I, I noticed this at the hands-on event mm -hmm. that it has. Microsoft has worked on this a, a bit. It, it digs into my legs less, <laughs> but it, it it still digs into my legs more than the yeah. kickstand on the, the Sony Tablet. Have you sat down with Microsoft to tell them that? Like, look at the, look at the it scars. Should, that should be the, the tagline. Surface Two <laughs> digs, digs into, into your, your legs, legs less. less. Do not wear with tights. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. So, not. I mean, again, we haven't done a review yet, but not a lot of compelling reason to buy this thing over over the Surface. Not so far, but we'll see. Okay. Uh, that's that's about all I got for this episode of the uh, Gadget Podcast. I don't know if I mentioned that it was brought to you by Squarespace, but it, it was brought to you by Squarespace. Uh, Joseph. Joseph. That would be my name. 
Say it again. Was it JR? JR? JR Volpe. JR Volpe. Yeah. Okay. JR Volpe on Twitter. Dana, Dana Woman on Twitter. I'm Beheater on Twitter. You can follow me. You don't have to follow me. It's cool. I'll be fine. We I can follow be friends you at home. Oh. Yeah. You followed me home? Yeah. On Twitter? Yeah. Yeah. I saw you buying pasta. I don't buy pasta. You I'm do. off carbs. No, you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's probably somebody who looks like me. Whoever it was, I slept in my apartment. apartment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this has been the Engadget Podcast for the week of October 14th. I am going to be on next week. You are? So you guys will have to talk about Apple yourselves. Oh, that's going to be so much fun. Right? Yeah. Oh, I love Granny Smith's and Macintosh. All sorts of All different of yeah. apples you can Golden talk about. Golden Delicious. Uh, I will be back in two weeks. So we'll figure out what to do next week. I'm going to be offline. Yeah. I'm going to be as far away from my computer as possible. Yeah. Can I give hints as to where you're going to be? I don't care. B-52s. REM. Yep. Yeah. Those things. Are you a speed wagon? Yeah. No. Were they? No. 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 Uh, thank you for joining us, <laughs> and we'll uh, I'll see. We'll see you eventually. Ciao.